There's a piece of equipment in my astrophotography rig that I use all the time, literally every single time I image, but I almost never think about it. It's absolutely essential, yet I don't remember the last time I messed with it or adjusted it. It doesn't get a lot of praise. I don't list it in my equipment when I post a final image, but without it, most of the imaging I've done wouldn't have happened. That piece of equipment is my dew heater strap. In this video, I want to show you the dew heaters that I use, how to install them and integrate them with the ASI Air, and how to get them working so well you too can set them and forget them. So why do we need a dew heater in the first place? Well, when a telescope is exposed to the night air, the glass loses temperature very quickly. And as it dips below the dew point, condensation can form on the glass, making a sort of a fog or a film over it, and essentially leading to the end of the observing session or imaging session that you're on. Now, depending on the climate where you live and the particular dew point that night, you might be able to get away without a dew heater for a while, maybe just using a dew shield and at least maybe for a few hours or maybe the entire night, depending on the weather at that point, you might be able to not use a dew heater at all. And in some desert climates, you may never really run into a dew issue, depending on, once again, the weather and the climate in your area. But for most of us, you're going to definitely need one, and it's going to really expand the amount of time you're able to image or observing, depending on what you're doing with your telescope, and uh, really uh, take away some of the worry as you're doing a long imaging run that dew might be forming on your imaging train, uh, leading to some lost frames. So the dew heater is meant to keep the glass just above the dew point, heat it just slightly. It's not heating it up a lot. It's not trying to evaporate dew that might already be there. It's essentially just trying to keep it just above that dew point where that condensation is going to form and keep it completely dew free for the entire night. So the dew heater straps that I use are from the company AstroZap. I've got one for my Celestron Rasa scope, an 8-inch scope, and then also a smaller one for my guide scope. That is an Orion guide scope, 60 millimeters in diameter. Now, you can definitely find these dew heater straps through the AstroZap website, of course, from secondhand sellers, uh, for instance, like OPT or High Point Scientific. Now, generally, they're listed by the aperture size of the telescope in question so the diameter of the objective of that telescope. However, the actual length of the dew heater strap is quite a bit longer. There's a little bit of an elastic end on these ones that allows you to get a nice tight fit. And you're also not just wrapping it around the circumference of the aperture of the telescope. It's going to be quite a bit larger than that. But most of these are going to be sized according to the aperture measurement of the telescope with some extra length on it in order to be able to wrap around the entire outside of the optical tube. Now, the thing that's definitely essential for it to be long enough is the length of the heating element that's inside the strap. So generally, there's uh, some sort of Velcro or something in order to uh, keep this attached to itself around the scope. But inside, there's a length of this heating element, and that's what needs to go around the entire outside circumference of the telescope. If there's a gap there, maybe an inch or two, you run into a potential of having not all of the glass of your corrector plate or your main lens uh, heated evenly, and you could have a, a little bit of a, a corner there where dew is actually forming. So it's important that that heating element be long enough. But once again, most of these are sized according to the aperture size of the telescope, and that uh, difference from the aperture size versus the actual circumference of the outside of the optical tube has been taken into account. So when you're installing your dew strap, you want to make sure that it's wrapped around the outside of the optical tube and directly out from where the primary glass is. So that would be the corrector plate on a scope like the Rasa, or a Schmidt Cassegrain, or in the case of a refractor that's just outside the main ocular lens. Now, if you place it too far forward especially, it's not going to be heating the glass as effectively. In fact, it's going to be heating uh, maybe your dew shield, maybe part of the, uh, the actual tube of the telescope, and also the air inside of that, which is really not ideal. You don't want to be getting a lot of turbulence in there. You want something that's essentially at a thermal equilibrium, that where there's not a whole lot of uh, pockets of cooler or, or warmer air that's going to cause turbulence and lead to a degraded image quality. Now on the Rasa, I've installed mine just behind this darker lip, and that's worked out just fine. That's just where the, uh, the main corrector plate glass is and it heats it just perfectly. 
Now that also puts it just behind where the dew shield is that I've got installed as well. Now a dew shield is useful for delaying the onset of dew, as I said, even without a heater, but it's definitely not gonna work forever. The, the direct heater is gonna be the way to go for a full night of observing or for imaging. Now I still have this on here. Uh, in my previous videos, you may have seen that I use that for taking my flats, it's especially useful for that. But also, it's mainly used as a light baffle in this case. It's keeping all the copious amounts of stray light that I've got in my observing location in my yard away from the glass, away from that optical train, in order to get the, the best contrast and no stray light in those images. So I've also got a smaller dew heater strap for my guide scope, and I've got that centered. The very center of that dew strap is just outside where the main lens is on that scope. Now, something I learned as I was researching for this purchase a while back is that because I was using the ASI Air, I wouldn't need to buy a separate controller for these dew heater straps. What I did is I purchased a splitter cable, and that allows me to plug in both the dew heater straps, those use RCA connectors, and then it brings them together into a single DC plug, which I can then plug into one of the power ports on the ASI Air. Now this helps a lot with cable management and also balancing the scope because I'm not trying to find another place on the rig to put a, a separate controller module. So then in the ASI Air app, I can set the power output level. Now here's the thing that really surprised me. You most likely don't need these set to 100% output. In fact, in most cases, that's gonna be way too hot. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, I can't feel the heat. It doesn't feel hot to the touch or warm to the touch. It really shouldn't. This is just meant to provide just enough heat to slightly raise the temperature of your glass in order to keep that dew from forming. It's not meant to uh, heat it up a whole lot, and uh, really there's probably an issue if you're feeling a lot of heat coming from these straps. Now your setup may vary, but I set mine in the ASI Air app at 30%. And I've had everything from a muggy July night where the scope comes in completely dripping wet with dew, uh, to other nights, of course, recently, where there's a lot of frost on the entire setup when it comes in, but the glass has stayed completely clear and I've been completely happy with it, all at that 30% that I just set it and forget it. Now, I would recommend setting it maybe at 30% to try it out. If you get some dew forming, bump it up a little bit. But maybe at 30%, if you don't have any dew, maybe bump it down slightly. See if maybe you can get away with uh, 25 or 20 maybe even lower. It just kind of depends on how much glass you're working with. So play around with it and uh, yeah, wait and see. Maybe if you get a little bit of dew forming within a little bit, bump that, uh, that percentage up uh, just a bit to make sure. So that's really it. Dew heater straps are sort of underappreciated. We have them on there and kind of forget them. I remember when I was first getting started in astrophotography, I was a little bit overwhelmed by this thought that I would have a separate thing where I'm trying to heat parts of my telescope to a certain amount. But once I got this plugged in and uh, set correctly, I realized it's super simple. It's something I almost never have to think about when I'm out there in the field and uh, doing some imaging. So I highly recommend if you don't have dew heater straps for your particular setup, look into it. It's a slight investment and the quality of your images and the amount of imaging you're able to do in a given night is gonna expand uh, dramatically when you've got these in place. So if you found this video useful, give it a like and that's gonna help others find it useful as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography. Clear skies, I'll see you next time.